Let's see if this works. Yes, this works. Hello, everybody. I'm going to be talking about Monero Garden, just like Johnny said. The Monero Garden is uh, a project of mine that got funded by Monero CCS. It's, uh, it's basically a website at this stage, but it's going, it could be like a book or, or even an, an app or whatever, because it's just content. Uh, my idea with this was to provide a resource uh, for people that wanted to, that got interested in Monero in some way, by some point, and you, you could link to a particular page, and every page has one topic and one illustration or one animation to explain it. We need help there. And, um, so, and, and what I've noticed in, in, in my time since 2017 explaining Monero to people, especially to normal people, is that they end up feel, uh, falling into one of three categories, right? See, it works perfectly. Uh, most people fall in the first category, which is how to use stuff, how to send, how to receive, how to buy, how to uh, say my seed. The second one is uh, what you fall into afterwards, which is what is Monero, how it works, what is a blockchain, what is a, uh, what are what is mining, all that, how how is how it works. It's for the nerds. The first one are the normies, the, the second one are the nerds. And the third one is more of the advocates. The, the why, why Monero, right? Why it's important, what it brings to the table. So uh, today I will be talking about some loose pages of the why path. Uh, every, every page is set up like this, has a title that's supposed to sum up the concept of the page and then some, some explanation. The first is privacy gives us the chance of trying things out. What happens is that uh, the first picture that comes to your mind when you talk about, about privacy and about censorship is like a government or a top-down, super powerful being telling you what you can say or what you cannot say based on some speech law or or ownership law, or property law, or whatever. Uh, but, and it's the most uh, that I've seen, especially even in this community, discussed how to, uh, how to avoid that, how to, how to counteract a, a big power that tries to censor us. But to me, more interesting is the um, self-censorship, right? Uh, and it's, it's more pervasive as well. It's uh, tricky to get it right because uh, every time that we are being observed, we behave differently. And this has been proved many times. Uh, this is the ASH psychology experiment. It's a very known psychology experiment that has been done and replicated thousands of times, which basically they take, uh, they take in the original, I, I think they take seven people uh, and another extra, it's like a, like a Monero ring signature. They take seven decoys and one real participant and they ask, they show graphics like that, like this one, and they say, okay, tell me which of the A, B, or C lines is equal to the target line. And what they found is that if they made it a people to voice out their preference or their choice, and they leave the real participant at the end, the first six or the first seven say a wrong one, the real one, complies with the, with the rest and says the wrong one, even though it's very clear which one is the right one, right? That happens a third of the time. So a third of the time on a very obvious right choice, we've, we, we decide to follow the, 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 the crowd, so to speak, by peer pressure. When you repeat that experiment 12 times in a row, that number rises to 75% at least once. Uh, so, why is, that, why is this important? Because in many ways, we live inside of a kind of a Truman Show scenario, especially when it comes to money, but it's also when it comes to communications. We are being observed all the time. Increasingly and increasingly, we are being aware of that, and that is, that is modifying our behavior. 
and it's changing our choices, our personal choices. And what I see, what I think, and what I've seen on people that I know, is even starts to modify the behavior when it's personal things, things that even they are not public or they are not shown by any. You start to lose your, lose track of what is this actually you, and what is the you that you perform to comply with others. So without privacy, how much will you stop being yourself? And you may say, well, why, why is this important? If, if it works, just stop being yourself. Well, uh, since we live in a society, or at least we try to live in societies, and we have been trying to come up with societies all the time, <laughs> instead of living in the middle of the woods by ourselves, even though some people like that, um, you get things like the candy jar experiment. It's also called the wisdom of the crowds. It's been also replicated by, I think, hundreds of years right now. But if you take individuals and you ask how many candies are in the jar, most of us, we get it wrong. But if you take the media, the medium of uh, all of our guesses, is super, super accurate. And it has been proven a lot of times. So if the barrier to give out our, our own opinions, to, to be able to choose fr freely, uh, thanks to privacy, is not protected, we will end up doing this kind of choices, or our guesses will be wrong, because instead of saying how many candies we, we really think they are on the jar, we are going to say the number that we think everybody else wants to hear. And when it's not about a jar and it's about the decisions that we t make as a society, that's even more dangerous. Here we are talking about money here in, in Monero land all the time. And the way that I understand money is basically uh, like a battery to store our time. Uh, so if we are voting all the time with our money, and we come to the conclusion after our, our experiments that anonymous voting is the best voting we have, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, the right to be wrong in our own way will help us get in the right together. So that's first page. Let me get this just in case. Privacy regulates pressure. Okay, this gets a bit more tricky, but um, uh, in life, like in nature, chaos, entropy tends to increase, right? We get more and more chaos all the time by things just being alive. But we, I mean, our brain, it's the most expensive organ in our body. And the, the energy consumption that our brain the, takes is bigger than any other organ. So we have evolved to, to, to take shortcuts, to, to make guesses and, to try to minimize the amount of, of brain power that we, that we waste all the time, right? Let me show you here. And what happened is that uh, since we, are, we find ourselves always into, in, in a chaos, chaotic situations, we evolve as well to find, to seek order because we get bored very easy, easily. So for example, people like to travel to Argentina and have fun. Uh, but once you have to live in chaos all the time, it gets very stressful for you, right? So everybody wants like holidays in Argentina and living in Switzerland or something like that, or most people do. Uh, I know a couple of, of them that don't, which is weird, but um, we, we did the other way around. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, but so, so what happened is that uh, we, we seek order all the time. And one of the strategies that we come up during, during uh, our societies to, to bring order is to centralize, right? So we delegate those decision-making into central powers of some kind, even if it's a, just a person or an entity. And what happens here when I say that regulates pressure is uh, just like a mocha pot, right? So let's think that society works like this. 
um, that those top down um, top down uh, orders that we set up so our lives get more predictable so they are not that expensive connectivity so we don't have to think all the time what is going to happen tomorrow is it going to like the government is going to still exist tomorrow no it's going to be all right everything works fine i can relax and think on some other stuff right so the way that we do this with rules rules work like the coffee that you put on the mocha pot right if you put too much rules or if you press too much you make basically like a pack that is so dense that it doesn't allow for the for the steam of the coffee uh, the steam of the water to come through and make tasty coffee right so if you had an, a escape valve out there it will just hit and hit and hit until it explodes and that happens a lot with societies that we built during times if we make the rules too strict uh, we don't we don't allow any any of the financial for example less financial decisions that everybody takes by individually in the society to find its way if you press too much you don't have an sky ball the system explodes monero as a tool as some others is a we we like to call it an opt out tool just because of that because it allows some pressure to be released in the system continually so um, it doesn't explode it's a good thing because in a way it's decentralizing economic strategies right so that's what I was talking about graphically you live in a regime for example that has two strict financial regulations and at the beginning it looks fine and it looks stable and people like it because like oh, I know how, how much it's going to be tomorrow the, the, the exchange rate between this and this but life doesn't work like that so you 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 press you press you press you press and you can see that it's tending towards down all the time slowly because it pays for the inefficiencies of the system with like fees that extracts for every citizen all the time so the, the pot gets smaller 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 until you cannot take it anymore and explodes and you need to create the whole thing from scratch again uh, with monero and also related to what I've seen, uh, I said before about uh, the cognitive spend that we have, it looks stressful in the short term because people say, ah, oh, it's volatile, crypto, I don't, I don't like it, the price changes, or I don't know how to do stuff. So they get nervous on the, on the short term, but eventually when it gets adopted, it gets better and more stable in the long run because what is allowing uh, for us and especially in my heart, I think it's important because it allows everybody, not only the people that are brave, I don't care, or that are willing to take risks, it lowers the barrier of entry for everybody else. Even the, 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 the introverts or the shy people can use Monero and um, feel good about it. So it allows a lot of little uh, financial experiments to happen and fail all the time, but the trend is upwards. So we get to a better outcome, to a better guess of the candies in the chart. Privacy reduces crap in the world. It's another one. Okay. Um, I find they are all related. I find that it's a very beautiful thing when two people can interact and switch something for each other right freely uh, that is is very nice because let me, because ideally you will be uh, exchanging something that you have and you value for something that you value more you can see here that actually in his heart he wants a star so the one wants money so he gets the star that he wants this is how ideally the world would work uh, we change stuff that we want for, for stuff uh, that we already have. But related to the first, uh, first idea, what happens when we are being observed all the time? When we are being observed all the time, we start uh, broadcasting or saying that we want stuff that we don't really want. Things that we think that everybody else wants or everybody else wants us to want is even worse and 
so we say, okay, it's, it's not that bad. I, I already have a star, but just have a, a, a square. It's not that bad once. So we do that trade. But we're still trading what we have, our money in this time. Our money in this case, which is our time. And what ends up happening is that when you repeat that by millions of people, thousands of times, you end up with a lot of crap in the world that we don't need. Doesn't make us happy at all. And luckily, we still have the star on the inside. But what sometimes happens is that we end up just having a square in there. Privacy empowers everyone. This is related to the second one. Um, I think that is important because, let's say, I, I couldn't find like a definitive number on this because it's kind of like a soft definition by introverts versus extroverts. I think privacy also is good uh, because in general, it levels the playing field of experiments and ideas that introverts can bring to the world. Because related to the cognitive effort that we make as well, uh, we need both of them <laughs> for, for, the, for the whole thing to work. We need introverts and extroverts. We need some, someone speaking and someone actually doing stuff. <laughs> uh, introverts are usually very good at focusing on problems that they see in the world and working on them until they solve them. But they are not that good at broadcasting them to others afterwards or getting funding or in the case of a very um, open society, open in a way that you are always like transparent and clear, it will happen that the people that are more shy are the ones that are more scared to voice their opinion. And when it comes to voicing your opinion with money, Monero helps with that. So that's what I say in a future when Monero is widespread, we won't need to shout to be heard. We can whisper and change the world. And the last one is privacy keep us in charge. It's also related to the first one. Since we are, we evolved so much to save as much energy as possible, we tend, we get lazy all the time. And what we, what we got with our tools that we developed during, through time is to, uh, to have a more and a more, not only efficient, but also predictable outcome of every action that we do, right? We, we, we like that. We find pleasure that, that I don't know, the, the coffee that we make in the morning with our loved machine doesn't surprise you and taste like strawberry every morning or something like that. So we, we develop systems that, that gives us the, that predictability. Um, lately, and more and more increasingly, like, or AI, uh, but it's not only AI, all the algorithms that we have decided for ourselves makes us very comfortable and, it's, and we tend to love them even if, even if we don't think we do. Uh, but they keep profiling us and they will act as well as like a kind of invisible, but just like the people in the previous, in the previous uh, slide when everybody was looking at you, you won't you won't notice, I mean, some people, especially people here will notice, but most people won't notice how much they are being shaped into what they don't want to be, or at least what they don't choose, because they have all the data points to, to make an unfair decision of what you are, and then shape it the way that they want. That's why it's important to have a layer of privacy, like, for example, Monero. So, if we picture those systems as parasites that feed from the da data that we give them with a layer of privacy, what we do is just rob them of their, of their food. So they, they don't disappear probably, but they just cannot grow that much or at least start to fade away or they get weaker, right? And they will always be there. And it's just like when you talk about privacy monero that is not always not there, always not 100%, getting there all the time. It's like a cat versus mouse game. This is the same. It's like, okay, they will make, the systems will make better and better uh, guesses at what we are in reality. And we will try to shape what we want 
to be more efficient, not only as, as individuals, but also as a society. But, but giving them not a perfect image of what we are, being able to opt out with the data that we, we give them and, and the data that we don't. Uh, the picture that they get first is a bit distorted. So it's not that clear. But then we will have the room to choose by ourselves. It's important. This is important because uh, we need to. We need to. We won't be happy, no matter what we have, if we don't have. Um, if we cannot be ourselves, uh, at least inside each of, of of us, right? I like this quote that says, "The ability to choose cannot be taken away." It can only be forgotten. At first, I thought it was like, oh, this is so true. Nice quote. I'm going to use this for the end of my presentation. And with every time that I practice the, this presentation, that weren't much, sadly, um, I noticed that, yeah, it's more like I would love it to be true, but it could perfectly not be true if we don't protect and work in tools like Monero. With Monero, it may be true. Without it, yeah, we are on our own. So that's, that's my talk. Thank you everybody for your time.